hey, Dean Webb back with networking-forums.com. And we're talking about IT travel. This is part five because I checked the last number and it was four. <laughs> anyway, and, you know, I was talking about hotels and amenities and I thought, you know, maybe I should also do a video that looks at uh, how you want to use some of those amenities or what may be available that you didn't know about. And this might also touch on airline. So this is a concept I mentioned earlier, letting people whose job it is to make you happy do their job, and then you get happy. So maybe we should start with the uh, airport, or maybe the ride to the airport. Let's say you've got to get a ride. Um, if you're doing a shared ride or a taxi, uh, the benefit there is, as opposed to you driving and parking, is that somebody else is driving and you can close your eyes and you won't have a crash. This is good. Uh, the drawback is sometimes when you come back from a flight or from travel, you want to be in your own car and drive your own way home because you know exactly how to get there and you don't want to mess around or you just like the comfort of your own vehicle. Six of one, half dozen the other. Uh, this particular run I'm on, I'm on the road for three weeks straight. I'm not going to charge for parking. Yeah, my wife said she wanted to pick me up at the airport anyway, so I let a, uh, I let a driver drive me. So chances are if you've got uh, like one of the shared rides, those guys tend to be more likely than not to start a conversation. Uh, regular cab drivers, more often than not, tend to be guys who won't. So if you want to have absolute quiet and time to think, go with a regular cab driver. Just that's been my experience. If you want to chat it up, get an executive car service, those guys will talk, <laughs> uh, or get you know one of the shared ride apps and get a driver there. What do you talk about? Well, you know, I, I actually like the conversations I have with drivers to and from airports because it's, it's just something to do that isn't work, that isn't flying. I'm meeting somebody new. And even if it's not somebody I would consider a friend, it's just somebody. It's something to do. Uh, what do you talk about? Uh, try to follow sports, I'd say. You know, that's always a good area to talk about. Oh, oh, do you follow sports? Yes, I do follow sports. I follow sports as well. Let us talk about sports. Yes, let us. Weather is good. Um, sometimes I can work into the conversation that I've got a particular film interest. I like Bollywood a lot. And so far, my my hit record with that with drivers from the subcontinent has been very good. We we get into a Bollywood discussion and we have a ball and it's fun. So I like that. I like to talk. So I like having those kinds of drivers there. They'll help me feel happy uh, once I'm at the airport. OK, if a person tells you try going through this line every time but once, that has worked out great for me when they said Go to this other line. I like you. I want you to go to that line. Um, the one time it failed was Atlanta Hartsfield, which uh, Atlanta's got its own issues. So we'll let that go. Um, the gate agent or the ticketing agent, if they offer you an upgrade, yeah, I would like that. So how do you get those? Generally, you got to be somebody who dresses nice. I mean, you don't have to be like full suit and tie and look like you're going to a wedding nice, but nice. You, you've got your shirt tucked in. You wear a belt. You're not disheveled. Nice. Um, then you're more likely to get work uh, or more likely to get uh, you know, little bumps like that. But sometimes you may also just get, you know, a little, little preferential nod like, oh yeah, you go ahead and get on here. If you smile a lot, the best way to dress yourself up is to smile. Be positive. Be kind. Be helpful. Be a cheerful person. And that in and of itself will make people want to help you. You're a sympathetic character. And on top of that, if there's something disappointing, don't yell. Do not yell. If you yell, that other person may be also having a bad day. They'll stiffen their back and decide, you know what? I could yell too right now. Let's both yell and make both our lives miserable. And you're going to miss this flight. And I still have to work here at the airport, but at least I have my job. smile. And if something bad happens, oh gosh, that's a disappointment. 
Okay, maybe you don't have to push the tears, but do, if you're disappointed, let that show in your face. A sadness, like, oh, I was such a happy guy, but now, gosh. And they may start to do things to help you out. Like, you know what I can do? Yeah, this flight got canceled. Let me get you on that next flight. No, no, I will get you. And that gate agent can get you on that next flight, wherever it is. They can do that. You piss them off. You know what? They could have helped you, but they're going to let you walk off to talk to a manager and you're going to miss the next flight too. You're nice. Let me help you. Let me help you. Now, what helps you be nice? Eh, it depends. Smiling, of course, being cheerful. Uh, I've got one joke that I like to use. Uh, it's a it's a harmless one. And, you know, it, it, they're called dad jokes here in the U.S. Harmless jokes. They don't hurt anybody. They don't mock anybody. They're just funny little stupid jokes. Like the one I like to tell a lot is, uh, why do sharks swim in salt water? Because pepper water makes them sneeze. <laughs> it's stupid. But they get a chuckle out of it. And now, I made, when I made that person laugh, they like me better. I've learned one thing from doing some stand-up comedy is that if you get a laugh out of somebody, you've got a bond. They'll love you. So don't be afraid to tell a stupid joke. Make it inoffensive. But that, you know, you know well, gee, since they canceled my flight, you got time for a quick joke? Oh, sure. And make sure it is a quick joke. And a little in and out. Hey, how many elephants can you fit into a van? Four. Two in the front, two in the back. What? <laughs> you know, just, it's stupid but it works so having a little one liner or two liner there that that helps to disarm them and they'll they will want to help you all right so that's that's the gate crew uh what about the flight attendants hey you talk to them you're nice to them smile you know say hey we're here they, they help you out they'll be nice to you if you ask for like a full can they might okay you i like you get the full can. Okay, yeah, I got a full can of drink. Ooh. <laughs> you know, even if it's a half can flight. And if, it's, if they can't give it to you, they'll, they'll say they can and they'll be nice to you too because you're nice to them. All right, so I've got you through the airport. Now you're at the hotel. That desk agent there is just as powerful as an airplane desk agent. They can upgrade your room. They can downgrade your room. Uh they can get you one that's ready. They can make you wait. If you're there early, getting one that's ready is absolutely important. And uh, the most recent experience I had at, a, at a, the hotel, hotel, the desk agent said, "Ah, you know, the, I showed up and she she said, oh, Mr. Webb, I've been waiting for you. Really? Well, thank you. And I've got your room ready. I was there like a you know, three hours before check-in. I've got your room ready for you. It's like, I didn't even show my ID yet. She knew Mr. Webb was coming that day and got my room ready. Like, far out, man. You're the tops. And, uh, you know, I'll, uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, in fact, I'll say it right now. It was the Sealbach in Louisville, Kentucky. The Sealbach in Louisville, Kentucky. It's a Hilton property. And it was fantastic. I think her, her name was Denise. Anyway, tip top. I'll go there again for sure. So, you know, I like that. You know, I've been in another hotel where uh, this was the, um, this is the Hilton Financial District in San Francisco. By the way, okay, yeah, just a quick tip between the Hilton Financial District and the other Hilton in San Francisco, I think it's the Hill Health and Central. I like the financial district one better because it's right there in Chinatown and they have Chinese food items available for breakfast. If you don't like Chinese breakfast, okay, whatever, it's not a draw. But if you like that stuff, really exotic, that's the place to go. I love it there. Oh, man, I do. And it was right across from a park that had uh, the guys who play Chinese chess there every afternoon. And I was there for a conference, so the I got a out early, I'd head over there and watch people play chess, and I'd play a game and get beat real bad and loved it. Oh my gosh, yeah. Okay, yeah. And and you know what? 
the concierge there was able to tell me about what's around the neighborhood, what's good. If you want to know what's good in the neighborhood, they yeah, maybe they're guiding you to certain places, but you know what? They're good places. They won't guide people there if it's crap. <laughs> uh, and, and, and that's something you've got there. You've got the concierge services. You can ask them for help. You can ask them for this. Um, again, back at the Sealbach in Louisville, uh, I was going to be... I needed a late checkout, so I asked for one. They gave me one. I have a membership level there. Um, and after I checked out, I said, you know, I still got some more time before I have to leave for the airport. It's not far from downtown to the airport. So I asked if I could check my luggage while I walked around and got a lunch. That's another thing you can do. Check your luggage. If you're there early or there late and you want to, you know, you got some time to kill, you don't yet have, you don't have a room because it's not ready or because it, you know, you've already checked out, check your luggage, you get a tag, you walk around, you come back, here it is, or they'll hold it for you. It's wonderful. I've used that multiple times, and it's better than dragging your suitcase behind you while you're looking for a slice of pizza, you know, <laughs> let alone eating one. So yeah, they'll hold the luggage for you. They will, uh, some places will be able to give you an advance uh, on money. It's not so often now that they have ATMs everywhere, but I've used that before. Get a cash, ad in case my credit card doesn't have an ATM key on it, I've been able to get a cash advance on that and put it to the room. Um, food, being able to say, oh, just put it to the room. That's always nice to do. Um, and being able to ask for, uh, if you get access to a concierge area, that'll be one where they have some snacks available, some uh, you know, drinks available, and they're all complimentary. So, yeah. And sometimes they will even have, it's not a special member, you know, member level that gets you in there. It, just that's something that chain does is every day at five, from five to seven, they've got some light, you know, some snacks, some light food and some beverages available uh, in the happy hour area. And boy, that can be nice after a long day. You walk in and like, oh, there it is right there. Ooh, spinach puffs. My, they're delightful. <laughs> and yeah, spinach puffs are delightful, you know, so yeah, go for one. Um, and, and. Again, as you travel more, you'll you'll get to see more and more of this and compare one against the other and say, you know, that's the kind I like, that's not the kind I like. You know, go for it. But definitely, these are things that people can do for you along your trip. And above all, it's that hotel clerk and the desk gate agent that can make or break your travel. If you're nice and you're a nice person, it, or really, you know, they, they default to just treating you with respect. I find this time and again. But if you reward them, like, you know what? I am somebody, you know, I am a human you should have faith in. I am a good thing. And you're smiling, you're cheerful, you're able to talk about things like, you know, hey, it's raining now, but it, it'll be sunny eventually. You know, yeah, okay, you know, light a candle, you know, be happy. They will want to do their job even more for you because it's a pleasure. You know, I, I, I'm like that with customers. If they're nice with me, I try to think of ways I could do a little extra with them. If they're not nice with me, I don't know. You know, that thought doesn't always come to my mind. And it's not because I'm trying to punish them. It's because maybe I'm just thinking, you know, if I can just get out of here, I can, what time is it? If I can just get out. Yeah, yeah, I'll do all the things I'm supposed to do. Here's one little extra thing. Hey, I'm being nice. But if they're really nice to me, maybe I stay a little longer. Maybe I you know, answer a few more emails faster. It's just because I want to be with that group. It's just human nature. So if someone's job it is to make you more comfortable, to help you, if they make a suggestion, go with it. Um, I, I think the best example is the hot towel. Would you like a hot towel? And normally you think, what am I going to do with a hot towel? If you've traveled and you've rubbed it on your face, you've gone, oh, that is nice, a hot towel. Yes, I want a hot towel. They will offer you that hot towel. You will take it. It is good to have. <laughs> it is good to have a hot towel. And it's their job to make you more comfortable. Don't turn them down. Try it out. Uh, if you're in a weird place and they hold out, a, like this happened to me in China, the guy said, hey, would you want one of these? And it's a tall porcelain thing and you pour hot water in it. What am I going to do with that? I found out. You take sips from it, it warms your inside, and you rub your hands on it, and it warms them up. His job was to make me more comfortable with something that was specific to that area, I let him do it, and I was more comfortable, I was happier, I've got a story to tell, and I enjoyed that trip that much more because of that. So, 
a big thank you to all the service folks out there. The ones I can tip, I tip you. The ones I can't tip, I wish I could. But if you're that, if you can be that kind of cheerful traveler, when you have a high amount of travel in your life, it's going to be that much better for you. So that's all for this video. For networking-forums.com, I'm Dean Webb saying come on by the forums where we've got a lot of smart people ready to give you a lot of really good advice. Till next time, bye-bye.